right, Johnny, what do you need to know? Uh, I'm just going to ask you some few questions. Well, first, yeah. personal interest, what's your favorite historic era? When when was the era? Is that the question? Uh, what's your favorite part of history? Like Vikings? Oh, um, I, I like... I like the time of the Vikings and the knights. I like that one the best. That's my favorite. Okay. Oh, just for the okay. Now, can you say a brief history of the Celts? Sure. Let's do that. Yeah. Right. Uh, first of all, uh, the the Irish were living in Ireland from the Stone Age. So we know that the Irish were anciently in Ireland before they came. But in center of Europe, uh, a people called the Keltoi, uh, they began to try out new methods of getting food. Instead of going hunting, they started to do farming. And so they began to really have cattle and corn, and they began to do well on that. Then the other thing was, they began to develop a metal work. Rather than using flint to make things out of, they began to make things out of metal. Then they started using crockery or pottery, so you see this thing here, this would have started as a, uh, just like clay, you know, like plastic almost, and then you put it in a hot fire and it becomes rock hard. And because it does, you can use that for cooking with, but it also means then that you can melt metal in it. So um, these Celts then were looking for better places to live with better land. And they kept going west until they came to the coast of, of, of uh, France. They went across to England, and then they came to Ireland. Probably about four or 5,000 years ago, something like that. So that's kind of the story how they got here. But about the tribes, Celts are in a group of people called tribe, right? Well, like, what were, like, some of the roles in that tribe? Because the only one I know is probably the, maybe the chief and the bull. Okay, uh, I, I can barely hear you. You're saying about the tribe. Let me see if I can turn up my volume a little. Let's see. Volume, volume. Okay. Okay. Your, your question is, again, could you repeat about, it for me? About the tribe, um, is, what were tribes. some of the roles in the tribes? Some of the, the what tribes? Roles. <laughs> As in, like, maybe the chief, the druid? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. The guy that was in charge of a tribe would be the chief or chieftain. And uh, he would probably either be the oldest person uh, or the father or the grandfather, or he'd be the most powerful warrior. So if you were good at fighting, you might well become the chief. Uh, uh, then uh, he would have his nobles. They'd be like his closest friends and they'd be kind of like in charge they'd have different jobs then uh, further down the scale then you'd have guys who make things so uh, things like uh, uh, like these things here uh, uh, this is called a torque go around your neck uh, they were the guys who made things out of gold um, but also then uh, the guys who made things out of wood uh, and leather and metal. Then, uh, then the farmers would be the next long they make all the food. And then at the very bottom of the scale were the most awful, saddest people of all. They were the slaves. So if you were a powerful chieftain, you go and attack another fellow's place and take his people captive and make them into slaves. And if they didn't work hard enough, it whipped them. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> so that was the kind of way. Now, women uh, were very important at the time, but probably the men were more important even than the women. So well, there you go. About the Druids, um, it, about the Druids, they made medicine and things for the for the tribes. Yeah. But why were they so respected? Um, are you talking about medicine now? Oh, yeah. Uh, would the medicine even work, or would they just help maybe well, help the pain? Okay, there's a couple of things. Um, we, know for, we know that they would have used the leaves of certain plants to help people with headaches, 
and we still do it today, and we call it anodin. Uh, they also ha would have had garlic, which is like an onion kind of thing, and that, that was believed to be good for you and was used as a medicine too. And we do know that it is good for you, but it's not really a great medicine, but it's, it, it give, it's a healthy thing to eat. Uh, a lot of the things that they ate, they, uh, um, the, the, the different uh, spices and things that they made were probably good for them. But some of the things that they used were probably not good for you. Like, they would get bones of animals or even people and grind it into a paste and give that to people. So that kind of wouldn't be good for you. So some of them were good ideas and some were not a good idea. But they also believed in magic, that uh, things could happen by magic, that uh, the sun came up in the morning by magic and went down at night by magic and the, the plants grew by magic. So they, they have all these rituals and religions about magic and healing that probably weren't true, but you know, maybe they were, we don't know. About the Druids, did they ever go to war or did they always just stay in the village? Oh, they were often at war. Let me let me give you an idea. Right. In the Bronze Age, you're talking about 4,000 years ago, uh, they would have used copper uh, tin to make their things out of it. Now, I'll just show you a piece. Now, this bowl is made of this brown metal called copper. So when you mix tin into it, it becomes this silver, goldy colored stuff. And that's copper and tin mixed together, which is called bronze. Now, uh, when they wanted to get more cows or more slaves or more corn, they either grew it themselves or they went to war. Now, now this is the sword. Now, the edges of the sword would be sharpened up. And uh, because it's energy, it was mostly used for cutting, fighting like that. So they would have went to war for, for corn and cattle and slaves and gold. So, but this is made of bronze. Now, the way they would have made this is you would heat up the metal in a pot until it melted and mix the copper and the tin together. Then you poured it into a shape to make, uh, uh, to make your... Uh, now, I have here a spearhead, but it's not made of metal, it's made of wood. And you know, if you walk in mud, you leave your footprint behind. Yeah. Well, if you pour metal into that footprint, you'll have a metal footprint, isn't that right? So they would use this to make a print of a spearhead. Then they pour in the metal in here, uh, you know, take away this, and it would leave a hollow, and pour in the metal in there. And that would give them a spearhead. And of course, the, the, they had uh, spearheads. Now, in later times, like this one here, is made of iron. So they would have used iron spearheads as well later on. But in the early days, these would be made out of bronze. As you can see, it's on a long handle. The idea is that you can see somebody with it like that. Give them a new belly button. You know? Spears <laughs> like this one, which you can throw. So you would throw your spear like this. And of course, that would kill somebody far away from you. And again, this would either be made of bronze or iron. Now, when they went into battle, they want to keep themselves safe. And in the Bronze Age, they would have made helmets. <laughs> I look lovely in this. Now, this is made of bronze, and this, of course, would protect. Now, uh, the thing about it is, though, uh, uh, when you go to war, you have soldiers or warriors, but you need the guys to be in charge. And the guy in charge, he wore a special helmet that everybody would know that he was in charge. So let me show you that. So, the horns on the top of the helmet were a way of telling everybody that I'm the guy in charge and I give the orders. 
Later on, of course, uh, kings wore crowns with a whole load of points all the way around. But probably this is one of the first crowns that people ever made. So it looks a bit silly, but that's what they wore in battle. There you go. But every in battle, a uh, man would have one of these. You guys know what that is? Shield. Shield, that's right. Now, uh, can you tell me what it's made out of? Wood. Okay. Yeah, wood. Uh, you can see in the center part, there's a part I can put my hand into and a handle to hold onto. And there's a metal bump on the front of the shield that protects my hand. Now, after a couple of battles, you're going to need a new shield. But what they often made, uh, they used bronze to make shields out of two. They would cover the wood with the bronze. Another thing they made shields out of was leather. Uh, to make leather stiff and hard, what they would do is they'd melt down beeswax. You know what honey comes in? Yeah. And they would melt that down and boil the leather in the beeswax. And it would soak into it. Then they would flatten it out and make it into a shield. And then you had this really hard-wearing shield that would take a lot of wallops to keep you safe. The other thing was that um, when a warrior died, he was buried with all of his stuff. And that's how we know so much about him, because we find these old graves, and we dig them up, and we find all of them. He was buried with his sword, and he was buried with his shield, and he was buried with his helmet. One of the leather shields that they have in the National Museum was found in a bog. They probably gave it as a gift to the gods. Say, hey, God, this is my favorite shield, but you can have it. And they threw it into the bog where it sank down, and there it remained for thousands of years till we found it and stuck it up in the museum. Does that give you a little bit? Now, there's another weapon for long distance, though. Any idea what that would be? Sling. Yeah, it's a sling. You put your stone in here, then of course you spin this around, and then when you let one of the strings go, away goes the stone. <laughs> but there was another weapon that could kill a distance better than anything. Uh, let's see if I can show you that. Where did I put that? Okay. All right. Let me let, let me just let me just get my other. It's a bow. It is a bow. It's right. Now, when you let go of the string, it shoots. But it won't kill anyone unless you have something else as well. So what else do you need? Arrows. Arrows, right. Now, uh, when our, our people came to Ireland first, they were in the Stone Age. So what do you suppose they put on the head of their arrow in the Stone Age? Stone. Right. Now, this is a piece of flint tied and glued onto the top of a stick. Now, what's the feather for? For tickling the guy. <laughs> no. What's it for? Uh, keeping us straight. Yeah, it always goes head first because the feather is on the tail. You see the idea? Now, it, when the Bronze Age came along, they were using bronze-headed arrows. All right, they gave up using flint and they began to use bronze. There's a piece of bronze tied on. And again, a feather on the tail. And of course, that would be stuck in the bow and that would come out. But uh, about a thousand years before Jesus Christ was born, they began to use iron. Now, iron is different than bronze. It's just one metal. What you do is you heat it up in a fire and hammer it into whatever shape you want. So they would hammer the iron into the shape of an arrowhead like that. You see? But if you were going hunting and wanted to be sure that the arrow would stay in, you put little spikes on the back. Imagine that thing coming at you at 200 miles an hour. You know, if you shot the teacher in the butt with that, it would never come out. Would it? <laughs> 
account. Yeah. But uh, they, they had arrows for all sorts of things. Big arrows, small arrows. Uh, small arrows were used for hunting small animals. And big, big ones would be using for hunting, like, say, deer. See, like the size of that. Oh. So you can imagine, if you shoot that into a deer, it goes in, but it won't come out again because it gets mm. caught in there. And if the deer is still alive and running, if you go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. But of course, if you're fighting, you can shoot this out at the other guy and it will kill him. And so uh, arrows were used and bows were used as uh, hunting and for war. So they used slings and arrows. They used bows and swords, spears and shields and helmets, of course. So that answers the question a little bit. Yeah. Cool. They had a lot of weapons, but why did they hate each other that much to fight against each other? Could you, could you ask that again, sorry? Uh, why did they hate each other enough to have war with each other? Ah, well, the simple reason was they wanted stuff. Here, think about this. If you were a farmer, right, you get up in, at sunrise in the morning, and you chop down the trees with a, a bronze axe and you clear the ground, very hard work, no machines, right? Then you dig up the ground and then you put, plant the seeds in it. And uh, you make sure that all the birds don't eat your seeds. You, don't, you, you make sure your cows don't walk all over your nice ground. You look after your cows and keep them warm and dry. And by the end of the evening, you are worn out and tired. But one day you think, oh, forget it. I'm not going to go to work anymore. I have a better idea. My neighbor has a nice farm. I'm going to go down and get his farm. And I'm going to, I'm going to make him into my slave so I don't have to work. Get and work for nothing. Get it. Get it. Get it. I don't know, Kinder. And he might say, oh, he has a better looking wife, so maybe I'll have her as well. So, uh, um, the, the, it was simple uh, greed. Now, the other thing is, if uh, you were uh, a chieftain in charge of an area, and another chieftain came along and said to you, uh, you're stupid. <laughs> Are you insulting me? Yes, I am, because you're stupid. There you go. I'm smart enough to stick you a hole in a sword in you, you know what I mean? Like, the other guy, oh yeah, you want to fight, do you? That would start a war. So you could insult the other guy and get a war going. Uh, uh, and if you won, you got to keep all these stuff and make these people enslaved. So in Ireland, there would have been about 150 kings. Now, some of these kings might only be in charge of a place like Sagart or something small or, or something like that. But some might be in charge of counties the size of Dublin. But if you uh, if you went and, and took some of their cattle, well, you go and attack them for it. So it was kind of like, you know, like a bunch of kids uh, at a party. There's no mom and dad's there. And they start eating all the sweets. And you said, give me that sweet. And said, no, I got that for you. No, it's my all right. <laughs> sweets are rash, and there's one big fat kid in the corner and everyone else is like, oh, he hit me in the head. So that's why they fought, to get stuff, really. So uh, they, they didn't even cooperate until the Romans came along. So what was the main reason uh, that the Romans won? Ah, well, now, uh, here's the story of the Romans. Uh, there was a bad mother. Uh, uh, about 600 years before Jesus Christ. And she left her two boys, or baby boys, in the wood and left them there. And along came a mother wolf. And she said, ah, lovely. I think you can And so she and gave the two right? boys first son. And brought up the two boys as her own. And the two boys were called Romulus and Venus. You knew that? Cool. Now, Romulus went on to make a city called Rome, probably. Rome, right. Now, that city became powerful and it took over Italy and then it began to take over all the way around the Mediterranean. And they went into uh, Germany and France and Switzerland and all those countries and they even came to England 
and they control Lincoln from the south coast all the way up to Scotland. Now, there's a story of a famous Roman general by the name of Julius Caesar, and he went on a boat to Ireland. Now, he never landed in Ireland, the story goes, but he just looked at Ireland, and he wrote about Ireland at the time, and he said, Ireland reigns for 30 days and 30 nights. So he came during the school holidays, I'd say, right? So Rome, I didn't like it. But in Ireland, the Irish people would have called Ireland Era or, 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 or something like that. But the Romans called it Hibernia. Now, if you translate the Roman word Hibernia, it means sleepy place. So you should be all asleep. Yeah, so Ireland is a sleepy place, he thought. Now, the Romans would have traded with the Irish Celts. Now, the Irish Celts would have been making boats and sailing across to England and France and Spain and North Africa. Did you know, for instance, that one of the kings in Tara, north of Dublin, had as a pet a Barbary ape, which is a monkey that comes from North Africa. They found his skull in North, in North Dublin and it came from North Africa. How about that? Now, among the things that they find in the in the Celtic kings' places, they find Roman coins. So we know that they would have traded with the Romans, and we uh, the Romans would have traded with the Irish. But as far as we know, the Romans didn't stay in Ireland. Although there's a friend of mine who's an archaeologist, and he says some of the Irish forts look like Roman forts. Either the Irish were copying the Roman forts, or maybe the Romans really came here. We don't know for sure. But the Romans uh, traded with the Irish because Irish had good corn, good cattle, and good cows, and pigs, and sheep, and horses, and all that. So they would have been happy to trade with us. But uh, they, they had enough. They had a big empire on their own, so they didn't need Ireland. Maybe it is too far out. I don't know. Will I show you some Roman stuff? Oh, sure. Would you like to see some Roman stuff? Yes. Yeah. yeah, all right. Uh, Romans started out as Bronze Age Would have used swords like this bronze sword, right? But they started to use iron. Now, iron, you heat it up in a fire and you heat it into whatever shape that you want. So, uh, let me see if I can wear this with my Roman sword. All right, now let me show you this first. Now, this is not an Irish sword, this is a Greek sword, and this inside edge would be sharp and it's for chopping and cutting. Now, but uh, in archaeology, they found one of these in Ireland. So we know that the Irish would have traded with the Greeks, or maybe a Greek fellow with one of these swords came to Ireland. We don't know for sure. But the Roman sword uh, is a little different. It's for stabbing as well as cutting. So let me see if I can get you that. Where do I put that? Everything is a bit mixed up here. Hold on. Excuse me for a second. I just put it down. I don't know where I put it. Now, uh, yeah. I can't find my room. I'll show you some other Roman stuff I have, all right? That many you know. Okay, yeah, here it is. Now, now, it's a great joke for picking your nose. Look, <laughs> no, it's not for that. Okay, as you can see, this has got a wooden handle but an iron blade, and this could be used for stabbing or for swinging and cutting. Now, the Roman sword is called a gladius. Now, uh, you might have heard of the film Gladiator. 
Well, gladiator means sword guy. So this is a sword for a Roman sword. But uh, iron is so much harder than bronze. So that's why people started using it. Because when these two get into a fight, this doesn't get any, doesn't lose its sharp edge. But this one gets all chopped up. See, the edge is all broken from me hitting it. Look. <laughs> now, but uh, Romans needed to protect themselves in battle too. And they too wore armor. Now, uh, some of the Celts would have went into battle wearing no clothes at all. We knew that. We knew that. Imagine a really cold day, and you're like, just going out and fight, and think, it's too cold. I don't want to fight. No. Can we do it in the summer day when it's warm? The only fought during summer. Right. This is Roman armor. Now, let me show you how this works. Oh. You see how it can fold up? If I turn the inside, you can see there's strips of leather held on with metal rings. Now, the way you would wear this is you put it over your shoulder like that. And you have another one on the other side, like that. Then Another one? Oh, another one? Oh my days. Oh, you you if you tripped in that, you'll never get back up. Yeah, let's see if I can show you that. Get the sword. Get the sword. Get the sword. Sword, and if something you do, well, it might hurt, but it mightn't kick you. You see the idea? So, do I look like a Roman now? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Right. Roman, uh, look over all around the middle, uh, Israel, uh, Turkey, North Africa, uh, France, Spain, all those countries were now taken over by the Romans. And the Romans would have took on, taken over England too. Now we are talking uh, around the time of Jesus Christ, about 2,000 years ago. So, as you can see, the Roman army was pretty well furnished with armor. Look at that. You can't feel that. Ah, ah, ah. Hit the wrong bit. All right, now, all right, let me get out of this. I'm not very comfortable, I can tell you. No, okay. Now, the guy that was in charge in a Roman army wore a plume on horsehair on top of his helmet. So you can see that this has got this stuff on top. It's kind of like nowadays a fellow wears stripes on his arm or, or he wears medals on his chest to show everyone is in pardon. Okay. So a guy wearing this would be a centurion. And the word centurion comes from the word cent, which means a hundred. Centurion. 100 soldiers. He'd be in charge of 100 fellows. Now, so that's our Roman. Okay. Now, uh, now, the costume that I'm wearing is similar to what a, a Roman uh, or a, a Celt would have had. Now, it's made of wool. Uh, but they also use linen, uh, which comes from a plant called flax, whereas wool comes from a plant called a sheep. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, um, they they would have worn a, a cloak over their shoulders to keep them warm and dry in the winter, and they would have put pins through it, but not hold it on their shoulders. Now, um, uh, the thing about it is, if you look at the colors that I have here, you can see that the sheep wool is all different colors. Because in those days, you had sheep that were green and blue and orange and purple. In what day? No. Okay. Here's the story. How would you get different colors with sheep wool? How do you change its color? Dye. Flowers. You dye it, yeah. Now, if you go and pick a, a load of daffodils and boil your wool with the daffodils, they will go yellow. If you 
put in a lot of grass, it'll go green. Uh, use bluebells, it'll be blue. Uh, you'll use blackberries, it'll go dark blue, and so on. So you can weave all these different, see, these are all different threads of different colors yeah. woven together. And so this will keep you warm. Now, to make sure that uh, after it was dyed, that it, if it got rained on, that the water didn't, the rain didn't wash the color out of it. Then what they did was they boiled the clothes that you just dyed in wee-wee. Yeah. So this would make sure that the color didn't run. Now, your mom would be making you a new costume and you say, nah, what color is it going to be? Yellow. Okay. Yellow. <laughs> Lovely. No. Now, uh, uh, the shoes, they wore, this, this uh, dress that I'm wearing comes down to about my knees. Uh, but a, a, a noble or a chief might have it down to his ankle because he didn't have to work so much. But on their feet, they wore simple leather shoes uh, to keep their feet nice and warm in the winter and dry. Uh, in the summer, probably they didn't wear uh, any shoes at all. Uh, but uh, now that we're talking about ordinary things, will I tell you the kind of things that they like to eat, or do you know that? Yeah, sure. We only know okay. that. Okay, like did you have another question, or would you like no, to no, tell you about go that? On. Can go on. Work away, go. Okay, right. Now, um, mostly they would have eaten vegetables. Um, so you're looking at uh, celery, uh, corn, uh, uh, cabbage, kale, um, broccoli, all that kind of green stuff, right? Uh, but um, they would have also had uh, animals. So they had cows, pigs, sheep, and horses, and they would have uh, slaughtered the animals to make meat, but they also used the, the, the uh, meat, milk of a cow, not only for drinking, but they made it into other things as well. What can you make with milk? Butter. Butter, yeah. So they had butter. And they also had cream. Uh, you make cream and makes it into butter. But also, uh, you can Did they make ice cream? Did they make ice cream? Yeah, now. So, yeah, that, well, no, they didn't. Well, you see, they didn't have fridges. But I, and they didn't have sugar either. So the sweetest thing they had was honey or, or apple or fruit. They have sugar. And we know this because when we give up babies, we find they have all their teeth. There's no hole in their teeth. Because when you don't brush your teeth, the, the, the sugar runs away your teeth. But they like to drink. They drink water and they drink Milk, of course. Well, what else do you think they like to drink? Mead. Mead. Beer. No. Alcohol. Right. What, do you know what mead is made out of? Honey, I think. Yeah, honey, right. But then you can make an alcohol out of apples, too. Liquor? Liquor? It's called cider. Yeah. But then you can make an alcohol out of um, hops. Barley. Any idea what that is? Yeah. Beer. Beer. Now, what would you drink it out of, do you think? What would you drink it out of? A uh, really big mug or a pot. Yeah, yeah. You could make. Uh, you could make drinking bowls out of metal, for sure. But an ordinary person who didn't have the price of a metal thing would drink out of that. A horn. A horn. No. <laughs> okay. Now, they made beer, and they drank beer out of cow's horns. <laughs> now, you should know uh, that there was a couple of reasons why they drank beer. Now, I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But um, if, you get, uh, right, if you have corn growing, you need to be able to cut it. You know what this is? Pickle? Yeah, stretch on your back. 
Oh. <laughs> All right. This is called a sickle and is for cutting corn. So that inside edge would be sharp. You cut the corn and pull it, then you got a, a load of corn. Now, the, the corn and the straw are still stuck together. So you now have to beat the corn to get it off the straw, right? So all the seeds of the corn falls off the head if you beat it enough. But now you need to get the straw separated from the grain. So what you do is you lift up the hole off and throw it up in the air. And the wind will blow away the straw. Down on the ground will fall the heavier seed. So now you have seeds. Hey, and you can eat those. But anyone who's ever tried to eat corn, you find it very hard to chew. So here's what they did. They crushed the corn. Now, I have a, a little device over here I want to show you. A corn stone? A corn stone? Yeah, it's, a, it's a grinding stone. Rotary stone? Okay. You see that all right? Yeah. Oh, let me show you what it is. Oh, it's heavy. It's a big stone with a hole in it. And they have a handle sticking out of it. And they have another one here with a stone with a stick sticking out of it. Can you see that? Yeah. Now, I put that on top of it and roll this around. Can you see the corn coming out of the edge? But it's no longer corn now. Can you see that? Yeah. It's like dust. It's like it is flour. flour. Right. So, uh, the Celts would corn. have crushed corn in a thing like this called a it's a queer name, isn't it? Queer. Anyway, they crush up their corn, they make it into flour. They, then your mom would mix that with milk and eggs and water, and uh, and they would make it into a dough. Now you can eat dough, right? No. No. Dough. No. You have to cook it first. Uh, what do you call it? What do you call it when you've cooked dough? Bread. Is it bread? Bread. Yeah, bread. Oh, now, yeah. so the wife comes in one day and she says, look what I invented. And her husband says, what? Says, I got some bread. Uh-huh. I put butter on it. Uh-huh. I put some cheese on it. Uh-huh. And so put bread and butter on top of that. I call it a cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Women are great, aren't they? <laughs> so, we uh, now get back to our beer. Now, about about the year 400 years after Christ, uh, 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 the story goes of a, a fella that was taken as a slave from Wales. Now, this fella, uh, uh, they went across in a boat to Wales and they kidnapped this fella looking after pigs on sleeve mish. Anyone know who we're talking about? No. Nope. All right. Let me give you a hint. His name was Patrick. St. <laughs> Patrick. You heard of him, huh? All right. Now, Patrick was put in charge of looking after the pigs on sleeve mish. And if you don't do a good job, I'll whip your little potato with this, you know. Now, one day he was doing that. And he heard a wonderful voice from the sky that said, Patrick, it is me, God. He said, God, God. He said, leave Ireland and go to Rome and then come back and tell them all about me. So he escaped from his slavery. He became a bishop in Rome and returned to Ireland teach the Irish people about Christianity. And that's God, Christ, and the Holy Ghost, and the Bible, and all that lovely stuff. And the Irish people at first weren't really getting the idea of Christianity very well. And say, so, uh, now hold on, Patrick, you're saying there's only one God. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, but we have a God of the sky, a God of the sea, a God of the land, a God of uh, food, a God of cows, a God of forests, a God of toenails. <laughs> that's a lot of all right then who's this god fella then yeah we have the father the son and the holy ghost uh, patrick that's three gods i uh, know they're one god 
How can three trousers be one trouser? You wear the one trousers or something. No, 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 no. So Patrick pulled up a shamrock and he held it up and he said, look, there are three leaves on a shamrock, but it's still just one shamrock. And they went, so God is a shamrock. <laughs> <laughs> so good at teaching uh, Christianity to Ireland, but people joined up. One fellow who was baptizing in a river, the story goes, and he went to stick his stick in the in the bottom of the river so he could use his two hands. But he stabbed the guy's foot with the stick and he didn't even notice. And he and when he came out and saw the blood in the water, he said, why didn't you tell me I stabbed you? He said, that's not part of the baptism. <laughs> anyway, Patrick taught Christianity in Ireland. And people joined up to this new religion and they thought it was great. But there was a, a little problem for the monks. And that was to celebrate Mass, to celebrate the body and blood of Christ. And you do that with bread and wine. But wine had to come from France and Spain. It was very expensive. They started to brew beer. So they celebrated Jesus Christ with bread and beer. <laughs> now, when the mass was over, there'd be a bit of beer left over. And so, he uh, began to live longer than other people. Now, you have to remember that uh, in those days, the water wasn't very clean. Like, uh, uh, all the, the, you know, when you went to the loo, you went to the loo near the river. And when your mother wanted to get water, she got it from the river. And then, you drink water, you go, nah, there's something floating in it. Drink it. <laughs> but because of that, uh, he would be a very lucky man indeed that would live to the age of 40. Okay? But uh, the monks were living to the age of 60 and 70. So they realized that drinking beer was healthier than drinking water. Now, the reason is when you boil the water, you kill the germs. And you have to boil water to make beer. Now, drinking beer is not very healthy anyway, but that was healthier than drinking dirty water. So, uh, uh, drank beer. Everybody drank beer. So, you would have a, a sandwich and beer. And even children drank beer in those days. <laughs> <A baby. laughs> what if a baby needed yes. water? Imagine your mother is packing your lunch. She goes, here's your sandwich, your apple, your treat. Oh, and a bottle of beer. <laughs> yeah, so much. What if if you were a baby? Do you still drink beer? What if if you were a baby, right? And the baby was crying for like... I can't hear it. If the baby needed a drink, you gave it beer. Yeah. So, yeah. Beer, beer with your food. Would you like that? I don't drink beer. I think it's terrible stuff. But anyway, all right. So, um, so they drank beer. Now, the Romans, as we mentioned them before, uh, they had in their cities they had a sewer, which is like a pipe that goes underneath the ground and takes the sewage away from from people where they live. But uh, when you go to the loo. You do have to clean yourself afterwards, isn't that right? And in those days, there was no such thing as toilet paper. Okay. Oh, you know where this yeah. going? Well, let me show you the way the Romans did it. Oh, wow. Is that a sponge? It's a sponge on a stick. Now. In, in a Roman loo, there, there wasn't like today where you have, you go into a little, have a little room on your own. They, they just had a, a whole lot of uh, toilet seats all beside each other. 
Oh. And you go in and you would tip tie a girl or a fella or a, your mate and you'd all have a poo together and you'd be all chatting oh. today. You're finished, you say, well, hang on, I need to clean myself. <laughs> then it's all covered with poo and then you have to rinse that out. Oh. And leave this for the next fella to clean his bum. Corona, man. Yeah. Horrible, isn't it? Now, okay. Now, uh, around the time that the Celts started, there was another people in ancient Greece, and they uh, they were a uh, Bronze Age people at the start as well. But they would have worn a helmet like this. Hello, that looks cool. I like that. Yeah. Like it? My wife says I look better in this. I am. Now, as you can see, it's made of bronze. That I'm in charge. Oh, oh that's really okay. Nice. Now, all right. Now, uh, the. Irish now had Christianity, and the thing about Christianity was they brought monks uh, to Ireland, and a monk would start a monastery near where, uh, near the river, or where people are, are, are living, and, uh, and uh, people would come down to the monastery because monks could read and write and do math, and because they could, they could sell their stuff, their cows, their pigs, their sheep, their goats, their horses, their corn, whatever they had, and the monks get a few bob for themselves, you see. And so monks became very wealthy. But monks were also very well educated. Now, I wonder if you know what this is. Uh, pen and, uh, ink and quill. Pick in the bag. Pick a little, pick a little. Yeah. It's or a do you quill. Use the for? Right. It's for writing with. Now, you would sharpen up the top of this uh, so it'll hold on to the ink. And uh, they did it with a little knife called a pen knife. You ever hear of a pen knife? You dip it in the ink that you made yourself and you could write. And monks could write and do math. But the most famous book that they wrote about a thousand years ago book is still around today. Book the Book of Kells. The Book of Kells is absolutely right. Book now, the Book of Kells is the gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John it tells the story of Jesus Christ and his apostles, the crucifixion and the birth and all that good stuff. But um, it is uh, written in the ancient Roman language called Latin. Now, it took them 40 years to write it. So if you started today, you'd probably be nearly 50 by the time you finish. In your hand, it looked like this. Ah. <laughs> now, now, they, uh, now, so uh, some people would learn how to write. Now, maybe one in a hundred people knew how to write. So not like today, nearly everybody does. But uh, back in those days, uh, one in a hundred people. Now, uh, do you know what kind of houses that the ancient Irish would have lived in? Huts, bungalows. Yeah, huts. right. You know what a basket is, right? Yeah. Basket. Oh yeah, yeah, basket. Yeah, oh. yeah. It's where you eat together. But they would make a basket as big as a house, and uh, they put a doorway in it, and then they put mud on the side of the house, and that would get stuck in all the sticks, and then they'd make a, a roof out of straw. So it was like a a cone-shaped roof and a round house. And uh, if they didn't, it, better than mud to put on the house. When the mud dries out, it becomes like clay. It doesn't come out again. But they often put animal poo on the outside of their house. Ew. Now, when it dries out, it doesn't smell. But that's what they did. Now, uh, boys and girls uh, liked to have a bit of fun as well. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that boys would have played with, and girls maybe too. A hurling? Uh, Anyone know what that is? Spinning top? Spinning it top? is a spinning top, yeah. You wrap a string around it, 
Oh. And then you hold on to the string and you throw it. And when it does, it rolls, spins, and it'll spin on its nose. And you can use a whip to keep it going. But they had another kind of spinning top, like this one. We spin it. So spin it, yeah. So boys and girls would have played with that. And little girls would have played with dolls. So mom and dad would make dolls for their little boys and girls to play with. So they didn't have uh, all the nice things that we do, but they did have... Uh, uh, boys and girls usually didn't go to school. Uh, so uh, if your dad was a farmer, you would learn how to be a farmer. That, and you'd work with your dad when, when you sit from your little boy. Uh, if your dad was a metal worker, well, guess what? You're going to learn how to be a metal worker. And the same goes for working, making metal, making bronze, or making iron. Uh, you'd learn that from your dad. The girls would stay at home and cook the dinners and look after the babies and uh, make the house nice and comfortable and all that kind of stuff. So uh, boys had one job and girls had the other job. Now, uh, but one of the things that boys like to do uh, and daddies as well, was go hunting. So they got out their bow or their spear and they'd go hunting for deer in the forest and uh, uh, they would kill the deer and of course it would provide a bit of meat for them. But it, it, I don't you can see there's, there's where his eye would have been. That's his antlers, of course. Oh, there's a bit of meat here. You didn't miss that bit. Okay, so they were hunters as well. So they like to play, uh, they like to do a bit of hunting. Uh, okay, any other questions I can help you with? Last but look, Mike, you might uh, put it out to the class to see if anyone else has a couple of questions from the class. So okay. Just say, Johnny wants to say thanks right. for answering his Thank question. Hey, John, you're brilliant. Good man. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Uh, Bobby, I'm going to now, nice and loud, Bobby. Share those. Um, hi, Michael. Oh, yeah. Hi, Michael. How's it going? Bobby. Uh, I have one question for you. Um, yeah. When did you start uh, studying history? Oh, oh, about 25 years ago. Oh, here's, a, here's what happened to me. Um, I, I was working uh, in industry. I was an engineer. But... Um, uh, there wasn't much work around, and so I was unemployed much of the time. But in a book, I came across how to make a bow, and I started making bows, and I met up with guys who like to reenact. That is, they dress up in ancient costume, and they pretend to be Vikings or knights or whatever it is. And so I started making bows for them, and they said, hey, Mike, why don't you join in with us? And so I said, okay. So I put on a dress, and I, I brought my bows and arrows along, and I started clowning around. But uh, what happened was little boys and girls would come up and say, can I look at the helmet? Can I try out your sword? Can I look at your shield? And I thought, wouldn't this be great to do in schools? So about 20 years ago, I started going to school. And the teachers liked it because, because the kids were learning. And the kids liked it because it was fun. And so I started to have all these stuff for my shows. And it was ever, you know, before the COVID and that, I'd go into your school and I'd let you guys try it out. And so um, that's, that's got me interested in history. And then I began to read up more and watching videos and programs about history. And I just love history. I think it's great fun. Yeah, my favourite subject in school as well is history. I, I like history the most. Oh, yeah. Do you like it too? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah my favourite subject is history. Uh, I... I um, there's no really... Oh, it's great, that isn't it? What's your favourite yeah. kind of history? Um, I don't know. I like the World Wars the most. Like World War One, World War Two, and then I like Chernobyl. And, and like, the wars. I like, I like, yeah, I like uh, Irish history as well, like the 1916 East Horizon and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah, it's pretty thanks, cool, Michael. isn't it? Yeah, Michael. All right, thanks. Thanks very much, Bobby. Bye. We'll get one or a couple more questions and we we'll leave you go then, Mike. Okay, thanks very much. All right, cool. Here you go. Hello, Michael. Oh, yeah. My name's Yassar. Hey. 
Um, anyways, I have one question. One question. I, I have one question to ask you. The question is, why did the Celts not build an underground civilization to hide away from the Romans? Why did the Celts I'm, I'm, not build? See, because there's people talking in the background, I can't hear you very well. Could you say that again? Why, why did the Celts not build an underground civilization to uh, hide away from the Romans? Ah, that's a good question. Well, um, it seems that the Romans kind of saw Ireland and thought, no, that's too far away, I'm not going to bother. Or maybe they got into a row with a couple of Irish Celts and they kicked their butt and they thought, them are too tough altogether, leave them Irish Celts alone. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe they were happy enough to do English and trade with the Irish. So we kind of don't know. That's a great question. When you grow up, maybe you could find that out for me. I'd really like to know as well. Uh, if I do uh, become an archaeologist or anything, I will contact you and tell you if I find if I find out. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bob. Bye. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Mike, thanks so much. All right. Are you happy with that anyway? Uh, brilliant. Yeah, the boys got a lot of information from that. Um, we uh, we learned a lot on the Celts and we, we, we saw, we were enjoyed to see all the, the equipment and all the swords and the things. Um, give them a big round of applause, boys. Hey guys, thank you very much. You were great. And great kid you have. Thanks so much. And I'm sure uh, the next class will be uh, will hopefully enjoy it. I'm sure as well. Yeah, it will be the Viking one, isn't it? Uh, or or is, are we still doing? Are we still Celtic? Sure. Are we? I'm pretty sure it's the Viking. Yeah, one. Viking. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Great. And you've right. been, you've been uh, been, uh, about half eleven, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, half eleven. All them times half you 11. have, okay. are, they're all ready to go at the same time, so you can follow. The all link. right. So I'll just click on the other link then, and I'll I'll have the Vikings ready for you. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Hey, thank you very Lovely. much. See you later. Cheers. Right. Thank you.